Hey brothers and sisters, I wanted to get on here and tell a, a few uh, dreams that I've had lately. I've been putting out these uh, New Testaments. Let me show you. Like This is an example. I'm making up these packets. They have a New Testament with a gospel track. And then my Left Behind letter, which if you haven't read it, it's in my last video. And then this one has a million dollar bill with a uh, Benjamin Franklin... <laughs> wearing a mask oh my goodness the masks are so stupid everything is so stupid and you know it's we're trying to get some people saved so I, what I've been doing is going and putting them out on uh, people's cars and mainly at grocery stores and things like that so please pray for them for the, you know that maybe somebody I mean because I've been putting out hundreds actually it's not unusual for me to do this kind of evangelism push um, between Thanksgiving and Christmas because there are a lot of people out and it also keeps me busy and off of uh, having a pity party which is kind of easy to have a pity party when you are single and alone and uh, you've been shunned by your family which I'm, I'm sure many of my viewers not that I have very many viewers but many of my viewers have um, estranged family. And that's the cost of following Jesus Christ, that we belong to Him. And He said, you know, come and follow me. Leave your family behind. And it's not that we are rejecting them and leaving them behind. It's that they're rejecting us and leaving us behind because they're not interested on being on the path the path of you know that the Lord wants us on. Um, so first of all, I woke up. So I started get, started putting these out, and I woke up. This was a few days ago. I started having these uh, dreams of doing spiritual warfare, like casting out demons out of people. So I don't know if that's what I'm doing in the spiritual for these gospel tracts and Bibles that are going out. I don't know if that's it. But anyway, I woke up. Um, a few a couple mornings ago at 3:22 and um I've been looking at like Lamentations 3:22 which is uh where the song Great is Thy Faithfulness comes from Great is thy faithfulness You know that song Morning by morning new mercies I see Anyway, I woke up at 3:22 and the song that I got was the King is coming, the King is coming, I can hear the trumpet sounding, and now His face I see. The King is coming, the King is coming, praise God, He's coming for me. I'll put it in the description box, but you know the funny thing about the Gaithers, if you do a video and put their song in there, you get a, a violation. I even forgot what that thing is called. A copyright violation. So hopefully me just singing that would not cause the problem. Anyway, um, so Lamentations 3.23 and, and 3.22 is about Great is Thy Faithfulness. I was also looking at psalms now the thing is we have a lot of people who say that we can continue just to live as a sinner when the very basic thing first of all we got here job and job is like i can't believe i was so ignorant and that i was questioning the lord and then what is job the right the most righteous man that ever lived he says, I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. Repentance, repentance is what my left behind letter is about, getting people to come to repentance. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Don't listen to the advice of the wicked that tell you that you need to put something in your arm. Absolutely not. Or stand around with sinners or join in with the mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. 
They are like trees planted upon the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. So when we are born again, we don't stand around with sinners anymore, and we don't join in with the mockers, and we are mocked for saying that the rapture is about to happen. And we're being mocked by people that may seem like they're fairly good on the outside, but they are fake Christians. Now, I have a playlist about fake Christians, and today Lion of Judah did a great video about fake Christians, and I'll put that in the description box too. But not the wicked. They are worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. The rapture is a judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. So if we're godly, what are we trying to do? We're trying to show sinners a way to get out of the path of wickedness and come over to the path of the godly so that they will be protected from the destruction that is going to be happening after the rapture. And then... Um, Chapter 3, so like chapter 3, verse 2, um, well, O oh Lord, I have so many enemies, and so many are against me. So many are saying God will never rescue him. Isn't that what our family does? That's what the mockers do. Some of them may not actually say it, but in their hearts they think it, and they think we're just crazy, and... We're like, uh, you know, some of the people that have come in the past who've said there's just no way. This rapture business is just completely wrong. But we see the day approaching. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept, yet I woke up in safety. And uh, I found this guy, I think his name is Bob Wolf, and uh, he was encouraging people, oh, 727, which is also a Harpazin number, um, he was encouraging people just to, you know, we're, we're in a waiting period. We don't know when it's going to happen, but I said to him, well, I said, it's funny, actually, I don't know how I found his channel, but I just thought, you know, this man must be a divorced man. But when I asked him, he's actually said no, he's never divorced his wife. He's been, 30, so he's 32 years married, but he has um, been single, well, separated for 12 years, which reminded me of my, I have a friend named Larry in San Diego, the same thing. His wife left him and um, he didn't divorce her. So Bob Wolf is serving the Lord, loving the Lord, encouraging the brethren, the body of Christ as a, as a man whose wife has left him, but he didn't divorce her. For 12 years and I'm 13 years um, divorced against my will but okay so that's what figures into this dream that I had um, okay so the king is coming I woke up at 322 okay so then a couple of days later I had a dream um, about trying to go see my husband now I have a friend at marriage for life who is uh, he's a stander he's also not not divorced. He's a man who's not divorced, but um, he's been a believer for a long time, and he, um, you know, he's an encourager also for staying strong in the faith and reads the Bible and stuff. So anyway, he um, he he really loves the Lord, and he is continuing to pray for his wife. And, um, you know, when I watch these different people talking about marriage and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's natural. Like I, I watch Praise Power and Prayer Temple. That is uh, Pastor Ray McMahon. For 30 years, he's been doing a radio show called Jesus is Our Shepherd to talk about divorce and remarriage. And, um... When the, when the rapture happens, it is a judgment. And the reason why I was thinking about it is I did have a dream about seeing a storm cloud that had all this lightning in it. 
and this huge tornado and I went running towards the tornado saying this is the rapture this is the rapture and there were other people in the room that were women who were scrambling to get on their wedding dresses they were going into a closet to pull out these yellowed antique wedding dresses and I mean that's one of the videos I've done but anyway this big gigantic tornado that just came through it's a horrible thing and you know whether it was created by harp or whatever I don't really know I just know that in the book of Job God controls the weather and I trust God that even if he did allow Satan to do that that it was still for his purposes and that there are some people who will be getting saved out of that um, devastation and I am praying for that to happen that there will be some people getting saved to go you know this is this this world is a or this life is fleeting this life is fleeting and any day could be the day to die or to be left behind in the rapture which is why my left behind letter uh, was like a last attempt to try to get some people saved now or to get saved even after I've left and there will be a multitude of people from every nation, tribe, and tongue who will be saved after the rapture. That's what the book of Revelation says. But I don't want to be here for that part. I want to be gone in the first group. The group of, of true born-again believers who live um, in expectation of seeing Jesus in the clouds. The King is coming. So... Uh, so anyway, in this dream that I just had, it, I, it was a rapture dream, but it was a little bit unusual because my other rapture dreams might be either wedding, I'm in a wedding dress or I am flying up. But in this dream, I go with a friend to go see my husband at the tennis courts. Now, the friend that I was with, I haven't seen her in a long time, but she and I used to go to a Bible study together. Her name was Tricia. We used to go to a Bible study together, Bible Study Fellowship International. It's all over the world. And we we were going to the tennis courts. We used to be neighbors, and we used to actually play tennis together. We were going to the tennis courts to see my husband, kind of like a last minute. I got to I got to tell him. I got to tell him. You know, I want him to be I want him to know what's happening. Another offer, you know, for reconciliation, I guess. And he um she was actually the woman that was with me when I first, when I, when my husband first, I know this, you know, I just ramble on. I'm so sorry, y'all. I appreciate anybody who watches my videos, really. When I first, um, when I first found out about my husband's adultery, God wanted me to do whatever I could to uh, keep the marriage going. And then when... I thought I could file for divorce because everybody was telling me I could. I had the voice of God tell me, um, my sheep, no, my, call me by name, very loud voice inside my body. My sheep know my voice, and he told me to persevere. He used the word persevere, which is in Revelation 3, 10, and 11, because you've obeyed my command to persevere. And I'm telling you, it was a command from from God, from the Father. It was so loud. It was terrible. I was shaking on the ground. And I'll never forget that day. So then, um, after we separated, we separated on 222 of 20, uh, excuse me, 2000, 2005. And then I got born again right after that. So 222 is a big day in my life because... That separation on 222 of 2005 was really what kicked off. Plus, the first time God ever spoke to me was two, day, uh, two days after my 22nd anniversary. So anyway, when my husband filed for divorce, every single day, the Lord would tell me not to answer the door. And they would be knocking on my door, and God would say, no, nope, don't answer the door. So I had gone to hide in my daughter's bedroom. Each day I'd go hide in there and all I had with me was my Bible. That was it. And I read a lot of Psalms and Proverbs. A lot of Psalms and Proverbs. 
And then after a, every day, every day, I did not leave to go to the grocery store. I didn't. My kids would go get food for us. One time they hid me in their trunk and drove me out so I would not get served because every day God would say, don't answer the door. It was not time for me to serve, be served divorce papers. And then one day after about a month and a half, he said, go back to BSF. So I went back to BSF and when I came out of BSF, which was the Bible study, um, I got served divorce papers in the church parking lot. And the crazy thing about it is the church that I was at, First Baptist of Roswell, was my parents' church. And I did not have a relationship with my parents because once I got uh, born again and baptized, they ended their relationship with me. And um, they weren't speaking to me for like nine years. And so here I am at this church. And, um, well, I mean, they would speak to me if they saw me like at a, at a you know, my son's baseball game or volleyball game or something. But in other words, they were not, we were not in any kind of um, normal relationship. So anyway, Trisha was with me at the time that I got served divorce papers. And then I'm crying and crying. And then God told me to go down to my husband's office to pray for him. And I went down to my husband's office and I'm thinking, this is nuts. What am I doing, Lord? And he's like, go down there. And so I went. I got on my knees. I was praying at my husband's desk. And uh, two of his, he's an attorney, and two of his attorneys, uh, female attorneys, came in and told me that I had to leave. And I said, I, you know, I said, I'm, I'm sitting here praying for my husband, you know. <laughs> he's, he's divorcing me. And, you know, I'm praying for him. They said, if you, you, we'll give you five minutes to pray, and then uh, we're calling the police. So, um, I prayed for five minutes. I picked up, the, you know, my protest was I picked up the family pictures at his desk and took them with me, and I left. And so, um, that started, that started, you know, a, a long period of time of me fighting and fighting and fighting for the divorce. Okay, so back to the dream, because <laughs> how crazy my life has been, really. Back to the dream. In the dream, Trish and I are going to go see my husband at the tennis courts to try to, you know, try to talk some sense into him. And he doesn't, uh, he refuses to see me, just as he refused to see me when I went down to um, talk with him after he'd filed for divorce. Now, <laughs> I might come back to something else that happened that was really crazy. Okay, so anyway... So then, so then he refuses to see me. The next thing I know, I guess I was going into Trisha's house. I don't know. But uh, we were looking out the window, and I had on some glasses, and I said, oh, I think I see a rainbow starting. And she said, I don't see anything. And I said, here, here are some here are my glasses. Try those on. And she tries them on, and she goes, oh, I do see a rainbow is starting to come. I do see a rainbow is starting to come. And so... And uh, by the way, Trisha was also, she's a believer who is married to a Jewish man who's not a believer. Okay, so anyway, we headed out, and then I see this rainbow starting that is not your typical rainbow. It is like there's this big white cloud, and then the rainbow is coming out of the cloud, going down. So you're seeing almost like an emoji, I guess, of a rainbow coming out of a cloud. And it's solid colors. It's not like see-through colors. It's solid colors. And as soon as it really forms, um, by the way, you know, like wearing rosy colored glasses, like these are ro beautiful rosy colored, you know. There are people who have on their rosy colored glasses that think that uh, everything is peachy keen and there's, you know, we're going back to normal and everything's going to be fine. And those people are... Um, apostate they're they're either unbelievers or they're uh christians who are saying peace peace when there is no peace or they're listening to lying prophets tell them that you know things are we're going to win this and things are going to get back to good old usa that's not going to happen judgment's coming so anyway when this rainbow forms in the dream i start running towards it 
saying, this is the rapture again, like in my own. I said, this is the rapture. This is the rapture. But all these other people were running in the opposite direction. Like they're going to go back into their houses to try to get something, you know, that they think that they're going to take with them. No. So I'm running, and I think Trisha was running with me. But there were other people running with me towards it. When we got to the bottom of the rainbow, there was a big door that we went through. And I don't remember the flying up through the rainbow, but I went up to heaven. I was in heaven. And the funny thing was, it was like we were all teenagers again. And, you know, I'm 62 years old and 16 years born again. But we're in heaven. I don't see Jesus. I don't see the throne or anything like that. But I know that I'm in heaven and all these other people are with me. And we are like teenagers, and we are we're laughing and joking, and it we are now at some kind of um, water ride, a water ride, like you know, like at a water park. And I I used to love water parks when I was a teenager, and I love Six Flags Over Georgia and all of that when I was a teenager. I love roller coasters. So here we all we were all like, you know, having a great time and. They gave us they gave us uh, shorts and t-shirts to put on to go tell these things and and then I woke up I woke up so happy it was I you know a kind of a different kind of rapture dream but the rainbow is our promise that he is coming and in the days of Noah when they're marrying and giving in marriage uh, that that includes a lot of people who are divorcing and remarrying. And they think that it's okay when it, it really isn't. You have to repent of your sins. So um, during that time that I was spending, oops, sorry, during that time that I was spending with the Lord, and I spent a lot of time uh, reading the Psalms, and I really recommend, you know, the Psalms, I mean, all of us, everybody has times of being sad, sometimes during the same day. You know, you'll be happy, and then you'll be sad, and then you'll be happy, and then you'll be sad. But just look for words like victory, rescue, um, the Lord is watching over me. And um, Psalm 5 was the psalm that I had people praying for me while I was going through my divorce. And um, listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you. And wait expectantly. Oh God, you take no pleasure in wickedness. You cannot tolerate the sins of the wicked. Therefore, the proud may not stand in your presence, for you hate all who do evil. You will destroy those who tell lies. The Lord detests murderers and deceivers. Because of your unfailing love, I can enter your house, which is what the rapture is. I will worship at your temple with deepest awe. Lead me in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Make your way plain for me to follow. That's The people that are going in the rapture are Christ followers. And our enemies, they slander us and they, they say things about us that are not true. My enemies cannot speak a truthful word. Their deepest desire is to destroy others. Their talk is foul like the stench in an open grave. Their tongues are filled with flattery. O oh God, declare them guilty. Let them be caught in their own traps. Drive them away because of their many sins, for they who have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. And so like running to the rainbow was like taking refuge in the Lord. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. And when I met with Andy Stanley, and I met with him twice, he's a Hyper Grace person. Watchgate Channel did a couple of videos about Hyper Grace. It's a really bad problem. He knows different people in the Hyper Grace movement than I do but my big one is Andy Stanley when I met with Andy Stanley he asked me this question you don't think God is angry with your husband do you and I said God is an honest judge he is angry with the wicked every day 
Now, I did not really know what, um, I don't know, you know, I was just letting the Lord lead me. But if a person does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow. He will prepare deadly weapons. I'm trying to cover up my husband's name. Um, he will prepare deadly weapons and shoot his flaming arrows. The wicked conceive evil. They are pregnant with trouble and they give birth to lies. They dig a deep pit to trap others and they fall into it themselves. The trouble they make for others backfires on them. The violence they plan falls on their own heads. Okay? And that's what's going on with this, um, with the, you know, the jabby thingy. The jabby thingy. I will thank the Lord because he is just. I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. And then um, down here, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. And that's the thing. We praise him and we love him because he, he, hel he helped us. He saved us. First of all, he saved us. Secondly, he's helped us through these afflictions, through these um, terrible things that have happened to us that make no sense. And he's the one who gives us wisdom. He's the one that gives us strength. He's the one that gives us dreams. He's the one that gives us songs in the night. It's actually in one of the Psalms, it talks about how he gives you songs in the night. So, you know, how good is the Lord? And he's the one that has us see numbers. Um, a friend of mine had sent me, oh my goodness, I forgot what the channel name is, but she sees numbers all the time. There are a lot of people who see numbers all the time. Um, and, you know, she's also one of these people that's single and doesn't believe in divorce and remarriage. Okay, so then finally, I mean, goodness, I, I uh, finally, I wanted to talk about, I saw... I started seeing 1018, and 1018 means rule, Christ rule in your heart. And um, I, I started seeing, I started thinking, well, you know, December is like 10, and 1018, December 10th, I mean, a December 10th through the 22nd is what my video is talking about, dates. And I have to honestly say, I don't know what day he's coming. I hope every single day he's coming. But... For me to see 1018, Christ rule in your hearts, which is those who are going to the rapture, Christ rules in our hearts, on December 18th will be 40 years since my husband uh, asked me to marry him, 40 years ago. And then that night we went to go, you know, tell my parents about it. They were not happy about it, even though I had dated him for seven years. He was my first date at age 15. He was my high school sweetheart. We didn't go to the same high school. We went to church together. Uh, I was president of the choir. He was the vice president of the choir. Um, you know, I thought he was really a true Christian. I thought I was a true Christian. I was not. I was a fake Christian. So anyway, um, then the next night we had an engagement party. And that was on my, my dad's birthday. So... You know, I'm, and it's the full moon. It's the full moon. And I have had one full moon rapture dream. Not that I expect that the rapture has to happen on a full moon, but I am looking at it. And then Psalm 18 is also a 222. Second Samuel 22, right? It's, it's almost exactly the same thing. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my Savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. 